Hello and welcome to this special edition of Battle Vision News. I'm Esclavon Pruitt. And I'm Angel Saris. Thanks so much for joining us for our College Night coverage. This year's College Night marked 104 years of the tradition. Goldside took the stage first with their show, Star Power. <laughs> The show told the story of a young singer in her tough journey to stardom. Her parents didn't want her to pursue her dreams because of her sister who left and never came home. She finds out her long lost sister is actually a famous singer who she looked up to for years. Together, they team up to take down the corrupt music producer who signed both the singers to his label. Purple Side took the stage next. Their show is titled Cryptid Conspiracy, The Lost Episode. It follows two podcasters in their journey through the woods, a purgatory for lost souls. Here they meet a godlike figure who rules the woods. They pair up with another lost soul and plan their escape, but find out only one from the trio can leave. They have to make a decision on who gets to return home when they reach the gate. The wrong decision is made and they are all stuck in the woods forever in a time loop. After about 40 minutes of waiting, SGA President Cody Hodge took the stage with the purples and the goals. And eventually said the winning side's secret phrase. It's our time to rise up against our time. <laughs> the winning phrase was, it's our time to rise. Purple celebrated on stage as special copies of the Alabamian were thrown in the air. This year's PV marks Purple Side's 51st College Night win. During last week's College Night celebrations, the new Mr. and Mrs. Montevallo were announced. Congratulations to our 2023 Mr. Montevallo, Xander Swain, and Mrs. Montevallo, Mary Kate Middlebrook. College Night was dedicated to UM Police Chief Tim Alexander in the UM Department of Public Safety. The SGA president thanked Chief Alexander for all he and the UMPD do to keep our campus safe. Chief Alexander was presented with a plaque during Saturday's intermission. Alexander has served as the police chief since 2018. You can read more about this year's College Night dedication on our website. And we've got more College Night coverage on our social media. Just search for Valovision News on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more highlights from this year's homecoming competition. Still ahead on Valovision News, Purple Side leaders Abigail Hewton and Carly Wilmore join us in the studio to talk about their PV. Our special coverage of College Night 2023 continues when we come back. Create your future as a social media manager, filmmaker, journalist, and so much more with a degree in communication studies and mass communication. Visit montevallo.edu slash COFA for more information. You belong at Montevallo. Welcome back to Valo Vision News. Joining us are the 2023 winning side leaders, Carly Wilmore and Abigail Hewton. What made you guys uh, choose Purple Side when you came in as incoming students? Well, what brought me in was I was a prospective student in 2019 and I saw my first Golden Purple Side show. And then in that fall of 2019, I had went to both a College Night Mixers and I had just really felt, I definitely gravitated more towards Purple Side. And so I think that the, um, then I had went to the Baby Purples Mixer and I knew that I'd found um, a home and I knew that um, after that, I'd made that decision that I am purple, I auditioned. And then that freshman, you know, that year I was cast in the show and um, ever since then I've just always been a royal purple. So I actually went to Montevallo High School. So I went to uh, all four years to college night with my mom. And then once I decided to come here, I came in during COVID year. So we did a combined show with purple and gold. So I didn't choose a side at that point because um, I was just trying to fill it out. And I found myself drifting towards purples and like I, the people that I was talking to and hanging out were all purples and I really enjoy like the energy that they had and I felt very comfortable and I used to not talk and like at all and I found that I was kind of able to get more comfortable and out of my comfort zone and I was like oh look this is where I belong. Okay, okay for this year it's our time to rise. Why that catchphrase? I would say that 
because of COVID, college night definitely, I think, dwindled a little bit. Not as many people were getting involved. And I think we were like, this is our year. Like, this is our year to make college night impactful and big and show that we can do something that's never been done before. And that really showed with our show. Like, it's something that I think will continue to be talked about, like, afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think it showed, like, Purple Side has gotten a lot bigger this year and it's gone back to, like, its full capacity. Yeah, piggybacking off of Abigail, I, I definitely agree with the COVID thing. I think that these incoming freshmen finally experiencing a normal college night after us two years having COVID and sickness and not knowing if this tradition is going to, is going to continue. So I think that it was a special moment. And with the catchphrase, it's our time to rise, I think that we did that. And I think that college night as a whole and this tradition as a whole has done that for the new students and the seniors that um, have gone through the two years of pandemic. Uh, so this was only the second time that Purple Side has had two female leaders. What was that like getting that win? I mean, I think that the word to describe that is um, like empowerment. It's, um, I don't know, I think that with all the things that Abigail and I have accomplished, we, I feel like, worked also as a team, as um, two people that didn't really know each other at first, and two two people who have grown together, have learned so much together, have learned about this, this tradition, this side, and for people to look up to us, and I um, hopefully we have made impacts on people. And um, but yeah, I think that the overall word is like the empowerment of two female leaders. I think it shows that you can really do anything. Like if if you set your mind to it, you can accomplish so many things. And that, yeah. You just, I don't know, I think it's very, it's crazy to think that when I was a freshman, I never thought I would be in this position, mm -hmm. but it's the fact that our side, like, holds us up and is like, you can do it. You, like, we can have two female leaders and accomplish something that's never been done before. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carly, with this being your last year as a Royal Purple, how does, it, how does this win feel compared to the victory back in 2020? Oh, it's very... It's near and dear to my heart. I think that it feels two different ways just because um, the first victory that I'd felt as a freshman, I didn't really know what the catchphrase was. Like, I mean, I knew it on that Saturday night, but like, I feel like I was just a freshman that has just figured out this game. But, and then when, when we had won um, freshman year, like, I think that I'd finally felt like this, this is what, why people come back. This is why we carry on this amazing tradition and then being a leader and winning we got to experience the nooks and the the crannies of every single aspect like as a freshman it's fun because you don't know and you're like oh we win it was so fun like let's post pictures but like as a leader and people who leads people it felt rewarding and it felt like we did earn this and um i, I don't know i think kind of going back to my word of like empowerment and feeling like um, just overall near and dear to my heart, but I think that the, the two that separates is the win as a freshman and just, just getting into it, mm -hmm. and as a, uh, as a senior and being leader and winning together with Abigail and for this purple side, um, it feels rewarding and something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. um, Abigail, since you were leader this year, do you have any plans for next season? No, I have no idea. I think right now I'm just enjoying my time, especially at Carly, just trying to enjoy the win and enjoy being a part of Purple Side and just kind of relishing in the fact that we like we put something on that stage. And I think for next year, I'm just going to do whatever Purple Side needs me to do. If it's just watching and just cheering in the audience, I'm happy to do that. If it's maybe being in the show, it's I don't, we'll just wait and see. <laughs> well, then what is something that you guys would tell future um, side leaders? Um, I would say being adaptable. I think a mm -hmm. big, like you don't really realize it, but being a leader is just realizing that there's just going to be things that you cannot control. And I love control, so that was really hard for me to learn that like sometimes you just got to go with it, go with the flow, and know that things are going to be okay and you're going to get through it, and to also lean on your co-leader. Like that is why you have two, like there's two leaders, because you can't do it alone. And I think realizing that you need to communicate, talk, and be there for each other. Mm -hmm. 
I think um, be willing to be okay with change because this game is ever changing. The people that come in is ever changing. People graduate and they leave, but there's people that come in and take over. It's like we have to be okay with change. Um, and I think that it's something that we had to learn as well. Mm -hmm. I think that any leader can finally, or have, I'm sure have said like, I had to be okay with change. So I would say just being okay with change, being adaptive um, of everyone and everything and all of your surroundings when it comes to you know, leading a side. And you need to also be very like supportive. I think if, if you feel confident, everyone else on your side feels confident too. If you believe in yourself and believe in the people around you, they will do that because you need to uplift them or else they'll, they'll be like, oh, they don't believe in me, so I can't do it. Um, so what was your favorite part of the show? Of the show? <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know. I think it, I mean, I think it has to be the end because of, you know, I'm sure some people could have guessed like, oh, what, what does come next? What comes next? Um, but I think the ending of like it having a haunting ending, not a happy ending. I feel like Herbal Side's always been very creative when it comes to shows with it being magical creatures and magical spells and all these things, but I think it's always ended, or most of the time it's ended with a happy ending, um, fairy tale like but this ending, I think, is something that is, is haunting and it's, um, it's, it's interesting and it's something that you're like on the edge of your seat and people have been saying, like, where's the rest? I want to see more. Like, I want a part two. So I think that's something that I will always, always remember. And I think that's definitely my favorite part of the, of the show. The first time seeing it with, like, lights and everything and the curtains closing, I remember just being like, oh, goodness, because it's just... It's very, it makes you think, like you sit and think mm -hmm. afterwards. But I would have to say, I think my favorite scene is the Roanoke scene, just because <laughs> I think it's so funny. And mm -hmm. I love, like, if you're watching the show, they bring out these pitchforks, like, just randomly. And I, I love it. I think it's so funny. Mm -hmm. Okay, going out the door, what would be your final words that you would say to your side? Um, I would say stick together and... Um, stay with these people because these are your people whether it's like yes it's for these four years but i feel like it will always be your people for forever because this is you know as this homecoming tradition people come back and it's um i don't know i feel like just remembering that these are the people that you've spent so much time getting to know we've we, we grieve and we grow together and we and we change and it's it's a ever i don't know the word just Evolving? Evolving. That's, That's good. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, an ever changing and evolving side. And um, I think, I don't, I don't know. I think that that's, yeah. I would <laughs> say nothing is impossible. I think if you put your mind to it, you can really accomplish anything. And especially if you lean on others like I think that's something people always struggle like asking for help and it's okay to ask mm -hmm. for help like ask for help learn together it's about like this is not only about winning it's about learning and growing and figuring out who you are as a person and who you want to be and then having these like make memories make connections just really like be in it yeah mm -hmm. well uh Carly and Abigail thank you so much for being here and congratulations on your PV thank you you can read our full recap of this year's College Night competition on our website. Visit valavisionnews.wordpress.com to read more from our digital team. And that's all the time we have for today's show. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in to Valavision News again next time. <laughs>